My name is Toby Hooper. I directed this film. This is the special edition of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre by Elite Entertainment. By the way, the voice that you're listening to is John Larroquette. Is an account of the tragedy which befell a and I'm Gunnar Hansen. Um, I was Leatherface. I'm Daniel Pearl. I was the director of photography on the film, and uh, this is the first time the three of us have been together since basically since we finished the picture. Had they lived very, very long lives. Now this, you know, this. Now John, uh, 23 years ago, whatever it was, um, I, you know, I, I wanted this narrative to sound like Orson Welles, so I, I asked uh, John Larroquette to do his best at Orson Welles. Still sounds like John Larroquette. One of the most bizarre crimes in the uh, American. The biggest shock I had when this film came out was that you ruined the title. Because <laughs> uh, you remember the title uh, on the script was Leatherface, and I really thought this was my great chance to be immortal. And then I saw this title, and I thought, Oh my God, what have they done to this movie? <laughs> I remember Toby mentioning he's going to change the title right near the end of the picture, and. Uh, uh, we were pretty disappointed because we were used to shooting under the title of Leatherface, but, uh, you know, time's shown us it was a good idea. Well, it's certainly better than the idea of the other alternate title, which I believe was Head Cheese. Yeah, Head Cheese. That was the original <laughs> title. Yeah. All right, this, this sequence uh, is meant to give you a piece of the puzzle that, that you're about to assimilate and to kind of freak you out a little bit and... Uh, <laughs> uh, give you some disturbing, foreboding clues as to what you're about to see. I remember when Toby uh, was talking about shooting this sequence and the absence of any light at all, having no light at all on it, it just, I just struck me as a, you know, as odd. And, it, you know, it's, uh, there to be no light at all on the scene, come and go out of complete blackness, but, you know, it works that way. And, uh, cinematographers, we always want to have something lit, and it's, it's, you know, it's not always necessary. As you can see, it's very effective the way it is. Now, this this scene, uh, help me remember this. I, I believe that this is a, a reshoot. It's a pickup. You it's did, a pickup. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the original story didn't open this way, and I, I don't even know if when the group uh, in the van arrive at the cemetery to look for their grandpa. I, I don't remember, was that in the original script or was that a part of this reshoot? The scene uh, where they arrive, the group arriving at the cemetery the first time was part of the script and something that we shot in the principal of photography. After I got over my extreme disappointment over the change in the title, uh, I remember being very surprised to see all this because, of course, I wasn't in on any of that discussion. So. Uh, the whole beginning of the movie seemed so different from what I was expecting when it came out. Yeah, by the time the film was finished, Gunner, I didn't know what you looked like. <laughs> <laughs> by the time I, mean, I was finished filming, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pretty clear image of what you looked like, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did have, uh, I remember long uh, debates about whether it ever reveal your identity on screen or not. And we came close to shooting it one night. Did we actually shoot it or? No, I don't no. think we did. I, what, what we shot was uh, making himself up, right. I think. It's as close as we got. Yeah. But there was a lot of, uh, I remember going, you, you and uh, thinking about it for a long time about whether we, you would actually would ever show him or not. Or yeah. I'm really glad he didn't. I mean, I think oh, that was the real power of the character. You know, uh, it's uh, like Darth Vader exposed. Exactly. There he is. Well, the sunspot. <laughs> you, you have the very best sunspot. Thank you. You know, a lot of um, movie scholars get really excited when they see this this solar stuff and the moon stuff. They yeah. think it really has some deep significance. So Ron Bozeman's name go by. Ron, Ron was one of the producers uh, on... Uh, and, and Jay Parsley, who saved my life. Yeah, did he? During the late in, late in the shooting when we were all out of our heads and it was 110 degrees or whatever it was, I was standing outside completely uh, unable to think in the sun and he called somebody over and made them take my, my mask off led me to his white Buick Riviera, opened the trunk where it was filled with uh, ice and Lone Star beer. <laughs> he gave me two Lone Stars, put me in the passenger seat, turned the air conditioner on, and took me for a drive. Is that right? Yeah, I'd be always grateful to him. Well, that's cool. Well, anyway, Ron, Ron Bozeman was uh, one of the producers on Silence of the Lamb, 
and um, he, uh, I think he remarked, or Kim Hinkle told me that I think uh, Ron said that uh, you know the, the most successful films had been this and Silence of the Lamb that that he had been uh, part of the production team on. That's that's hearsay. I think he said that. Here's the. Uh, this there's Ted's van. His van. We had two vans amongst us. <laughs> we had the sound man on this one, and uh, I owned another van that was a little bit smaller. Uh, we one had to be the grip truck. One was going to be the picture truck, and uh, it's our decision for shooting room to use the big one as the picture truck. So the little one became the grip truck. Uh, give you some idea of the kind of uh, shoestring budget we were working on. And, uh, and we're also here seeing the man that I absolutely hated, uh, Paul Partain, because he was so into his character as Franklin that, first of all, I never saw him out of the wheelchair, and he whined all the time, I mean, off, I mean, off camera. So he was really the one person I was really happy to kill, because uh, I knew he would be off the set after that. Toby, Jim Franklin, was a friend of ours, uh, told yeah. me some years later that the, 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 the part Franklin was, was intended for him originally. Is that true? That's true. That's true. That's the, the part was named after him, and I, I've forgotten what happened. I I asked him; he couldn't do it or something. I'm I'm not sure why Jim Franklin uh, did, didn't do the picture. Paul Partain, by the way, did a great, an excellent job. Yeah. Yeah. He called me out of the blue uh, last winter. I hadn't Paul. talked to him since the day he died, and we had nothing to say to each other. That's <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess to, not, yes. <laughs> what can you say to a dead man? <laughs> right. <laughs> now, I checked along the way with the uh, the MPAA. Uh, this film was made when there was a G rating, a PG, and an R. And and I wanted to get a PG, you know, and, and at least this this was the, uh, the dialogue with the MPAA. So we agreed that... Uh, kind of in theory that we um, we may get a PG if there is no blood shown and it of course it depends on it how effective the film was but uh, so there isn't there isn't really that much blood in this film I mean people have images of this film and immediately they, they say blood but as you watch the film notice I think there's probably about two ounces <laughs> <laughs> that was John Henry Falk by the way isn't it? Yeah, yeah. John Henry Falk yeah. well it's interesting about the business with the blood, because um, a year and a half ago, a fellow came up to me and said, this movie has the best special effects I've ever seen in a film. Why can't they do them like this? And I said, well, the reason is because there aren't any. And he said, no, absolutely not. I saw all this happen. And he was just absolutely convinced that you had put it all in. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard that as well. I mean, people have argued with me that this, this film is bloody. <laughs> I li you know what I liked about that was the way you, you cut that when he's taking a breath. Uh, Here. Uh, I don't mean to be contrary, but I know how much blood was made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I know you do. But, 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 but and it remember? tasted really good, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but, 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 Daniel, it was a kid. Well, watch and see. I mean, a lot of it's on the walls. Oh, yes, exactly. And it's dried, yeah. and it's very, yeah. very true. The majority of it was used on the set. There's no doubt about that. But and Marilyn. And Marilyn. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, but I remember but one night, uh, <laughs> uh, you'll see with the, uh, the the attack on the... On the the character Franklin at night in a, in a wheelchair when, uh, you know, we were, you were literally, uh, thrown, I don't know if you were using, I was shooting so I couldn't see exactly where it was coming from, I know it was coming from cups, or cups full or something or mouths full or whatever, it was flying <laughs> everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Well, in yeah, fact, I don't <laughs> we may have been spitting it, I'm not sure. <laughs> in fact, uh, when, Franklin when Franklin <laughs> yeah. died, you know, there was one person, and in fact, you were one of them, flicking blood up from either side of it. Yes. And yeah. then at the end, you can see the big goblet of blood is when you sort of seem to get frustrated and you took and just threw the whole <laughs> cup of blood at me and it's this big hit on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll watch for that. <laughs> By the way, this, uh, when I saw the film for the first time, was the creepiest moment in a movie I'd ever experienced. These close-ups on the cattle. That's some more of the pickups you did, isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah. That's a, that was about that one. Are, yeah. It's about 100 miles away, I think. Now, this van, uh, Daniel, the van that we're in um, was wrecked, right? This van, the... Uh, it, it hit a cow, right? Oh, God, I don't it know what the... Like, I don't know what... I'm not exactly sure what the fate of it is. You, you can see... I, I remember being a little bit disappointed uh, coming out of this because the, the windows blew out. You see there's very little detail outside the windows, yeah. but 
as a, you know, I was 23 years old at the time we did this. I was very uh, new to new to this. I always thought and you overexposed uh, this on purpose. Mm, it was I was just exposed in the film, you know, as best yeah. I could. Uh, now uh, nowadays, you know, big rigs, lighting everywhere, and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. I'm not sure it'd be any more effective, but it certainly would. Uh, would uh, you know go to a lot greater lengths than we did? Yeah, it, it burned out on us. I mean, we could have. I've, I've, people have asked me, why didn't we shoot this poor man's? You know, while, while it's standing still. Right. But well, we didn't know it was going to burn. Out. Yeah, no, no, we didn't know it was going. <laughs> but 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 the but but actually driving the car and and that heat really helped. It helped yeah. the performance. It was but the way it was. Us, but this <laughs> is a great shot. I remember when you came to me and said, "This is going to get this wide shot. Just run this car really small down across the bottom of the frame. It's really, uh, yeah, it's nice a, composition." But the way the film was exposed here, I also thought it really made it feel hot. Yeah, and, hot. And, and yeah. Really caught the feeling. I remember Alan uh, Danzinger, uh, the driver, getting uh, upset at, at one point uh, during this uh, this sequence. And it seems like, I don't know, do you remember, Daniel? We, what, did, what, he got, what was it about? Was I it? don't know what. <laughs> the heat, probably. <laughs> the heat. Well... Good thing we weren't lighting it; only would have been hotter. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially the lights we had in '73. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> sun guns. <laughs> God, oh, it was hot. I mean, I mean, shooting at the interiors, very, very hot. It was slow speed film. Uh, Believe well, me, you guys it? didn't know hot. <laughs> oh well, uh, yeah. Well, no, we what we did. We did. Uh, Remember, I was the guy in the rubber head. <laughs> As Toby just mentioned, we used a slow speed film. This film, uh, for those of you who are interested in this sort of technical technical talk, is uh, was shot in 16 millimeter, blown up to 35 millimeter for release. Uh, at the time, there was uh, only one negative stock, and um, the quality uh, we were told it would not be very good if we shot it in 16 millimeter. So uh, we were. Uh, uh, led to shoot it on the uh, finest grain stock that existed at the time. We didn't want the picture to be outrageously grainy. So we shot a picture called uh, ECO, shot a, a film called ECO, rather. And uh, it's uh, very, very slow, even by, to, uh, you know, slower than even the finest grain films today. It was an ASA 25 film stock. Um, for example, uh, it requires four times as much light as sort of a normal speed film does today. So uh, the combination of that, our very slow film stock, and uh, uh, not having an outrageously big uh, supply of lights. I had never seen a 5K or a 10K before we started this film, and I got, I think I got two fives and one ten for the night, and uh, they're not even considered all that big by today's standards. But uh, a lot of, uh, we went through a lot to to, to preserve, you know, get the best look we could on this slow film stock. But it did often mean it was very hot. Although here, I'm pretty certain I'm just shooting this basically available light. Uh, but it was a very hot time in, in uh, Texas when we were doing the movie. Very, very hot. Ed Neal was particularly good in this scene. He's really good in the film. Ouch. I remember watching <laughs> Ed play this scene and I think I'd never quite seen anything like this. <laughs> Did we we started with this, didn't we? I mean, the film was pretty pretty much shot in in sequence. I think we did, yeah. I think it was shot in almost in sequence. A lot of people think that's me, by the way. <laughs> well, they do. No kidding. Yeah. You played Franklin, right? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of watching the movie now. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I apologize, but kind of, you know, this. <laughs> I don't know how long did we stay out in the in this uh, van and shoot? Was it uh, a day or two days, or did we pick it up in pieces? Or uh, I don't know, Gunner. You may know better. You probably, since you weren't involved with these scenes, you might be getting status reports on us. We were just in the thick of it. I'm sure it was well, two days at least. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know that you guys were about two weeks and all before I came in, uh -huh. and so I wasn't sure. It's interesting watching them all together because I was around for some of the early scenes shooting when I was not going to be 
on camera, but I just wanted to come out and get a feel for it. So I was around for some of that. One of the things I noticed was that um, all of the victims called each other by their character names when they were together. And I realized they were just trying to get into the parts, and a lot of the lines I gathered were ad-lib lines that they sort of came up with when they were at the Franklin House. But one of the results of that was that um, nobody would talk to me. Because if they were all going to be the people they were as characters, right. then they didn't want to know the guy who was going to kill them. So during the filming, none of them would talk to me or be anywhere near me until they were dead. So, in fact, most of the filming, Ed Neal was the only person who talked to me. That's, uh, that's, yeah. that's an interesting perspective. That, that, uh, that and, the, and, of course, the other reason was I smelled so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we may want to talk about that when the dinner scene comes up, but <laughs> yeah, oh I had only God. one costume, and, and the shirt had been dyed, so I gathered that nobody wanted to get it clean because they were afraid either of losing it or have the color change. So right. I wore the same clothes 12 to 16 hours a day for, for seven days a week for four weeks. Oh, that's anyway. right. I know toward the end, people didn't want me to eat with them. I, I remember that, that edict because it was uh, Marilyn Burns uh, lost her costume. Uh, she had, I think we had triples, maybe. And uh, either two pair got lost or one or something. We had to try to replace the sweater, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how we had achieved that uh, because we would bought the, the whole stock of that, uh, that particular line. Well, that was one-off for me, including my boots, which you borrowed. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> you said, let me borrow these boots. I think we should put new soles on them. And when I got them back, they had three-inch heels on them. So I'm really 5'2", by the way, when you see <laughs> This is where my heart started racing during the first time I saw the whole movie, and I didn't. It didn't stop until the end. I mean, I just was panicked for the rest of the movie. And and and, and working on the screenplay, it was uh, uh, Kim Hinkle and I would. Uh, uh, Kim would come over to my house, and I would uh, I would sit in my little office, and then Kim Kim and I would talk and talk, and he would go into the kitchen where the typewriter was. And he would bang out pages and come back, and we'd talk and talk more, and he'd go bang pages out and, and so forth. And we knew we, when, we, when it was funny to us, uh, it, it, we knew it was right. And, and there's, a, there's dark humor in this. I mean, it, this maybe seems so obvious, not silly to say, but the first eight years after the first release of, of uh, Chainsaw, uh, people did not see the humor. Um, but there is this, this, you know, I think you can well, see Well, except it, for uh, my Keystone Cops stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, we got to bring something up, which is a question I get asked all the time. Um, people come to me all the time and say, this is a true story, isn't it? And they're convinced that, in fact, uh, this happened in Texas. I've had people say, I knew the original Leatherface. I was a prison guard in Huntsville, Texas. No kidding. And, you know, he had a chemical imbalance in his brain. He works in the kitchen now. I mean, oh, I would get good. these lines. Really? And I remember... Toby, late at night, uh, sitting with you and Kim talking about it, and I recall that you said that though this movie wasn't based on any any events, that it was you wanted to make it a film about a whole family of Ed Geins. Is that mm -hmm. do I remember that right? Yeah, that's roughly uh, uh, correct because I had, I had relatives that uh, uh, lived in Wisconsin, uh, not far, not that many miles from um, uh, Ed Gein's house, and uh, and when I was a child, they would tell me these stories about. Uh, uh, you know, human skin lampshades and uh, furniture upholstery, and uh, uh, and I, but I didn't know the name. I didn't know Ed Gein, and so actually, I didn't know this film was based on Ed Gein until two or three years after we made the picture. Well, it's good uh, to know that you it, found out what you did. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy I found out. <laughs> and, and 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 another thing, Gunner. Uh, it, at the the top of the crawl, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it says the story the story you're about to see is true. Oh yeah, and I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and now the story that's now the movie that's just as real, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what's also interesting about that is people who take that to mean that it actually happened, they also don't read the rest of the um, of the crawl because it says this happened the summer of 1973. 
Well, that's the summer we filmed it. Mm -hmm. So you'd think that if they were that literal-minded, they'd, yeah. they'd figure that out. Now, I, would ha <laughs> I happened to be here for this scene. Uh, this was one of the days I, I drove out to watch. And I thought this guy doing the windows was wonderful. He was a friend of Marilyn's. Yeah, he you? was, yes. Uh, Robert Corton. He did, did a very good job with this. Good guy. Love Jim Cito. I, I, I used Jim Cito in a, uh, an Amazing Stories I did. And uh, it was really fun. Well, the one thing I noticed about him was he was probably the only actor in the movie who could look benign and then become extremely evil without any makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a, he has a running conflict. You see, an inner conflict. This character uh, does. He uh, he's not altogether sure where the moral line is drawn. And uh, uh, and the dinner scene at the end of the film, the finale, uh, he's kind of splitting the difference between. Uh, worrying about what uh, old grandpa is thinking, even forgetting that grandpa's on the same track as the other guys, but he's, he flip-flops his personality around. There's also evidently some ambiguity about whether he is the brother of the other two or the father of the mm -hmm. other two. Yeah, there is. He's, he's, he was meant to be the brother. This always gets a laugh. Where are these guys now? I know uh, Alan Danziger is in Austin, has a company called uh, Three Ring Service. Really? Yeah. He uh, provides entertainment, uh, uh, stripograms to uh, uh, flute playing chickens. I don't know. I, th and I think that uh, uh, Bill Vale is uh, uh, an art director. Jim is retired and living in Houston, and I guess Marilyn is back in Houston, too. That's what I, I yeah. the last I heard, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think Ed is still in Austin. Oh, yeah. And, in fact, uh, Terry McMinn, uh, who is the, the one who gets it on the hook, Pam, yeah. uh, she came back to Austin a couple of years ago. Oh. Yeah. So that covers everybody except Franklin. Yeah, I, I don't know where Paul is. What do we have, Daniel? About 40 feet of track? We did. We had, uh, uh, yeah, we had a really good track system, uh, rigid with a, with a flatbed uh, dolly that we put on it and work off the sticks and a hi-hat, but it was a really good system for us. You didn't have a lot of track, though. I remember there's a scene in here. I think it's the one where you rolled under the swing. Mm -hmm. Weren't you, didn't you have a couple of guys crawling forward and setting track in front of you? Uh, that one, uh, I don't think we did that on that one because we were so low. I don't think they could have ever gotten in there um, to, to flip it. But we may have been flipping it in a couple of other situations. Yeah, I remember something when that was going on. Yeah, they, they, uh, that g going under the swing, they had to to lift the swing just as you, just as Danny Daniel got under it. I remember that scene. Uh, which is coming up in a little bit. That under the swing scene is, uh, stands out in my mind. One of the most graphic memories I have of the, of the whole shoot. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it when we get done yeah. because that's a really good scene. Because we'll, we'll we'll talk about it later. But there was other coverage shot, and I know it freaked you out. <laughs> and I didn't yeah, use any of it. We'll save you it. You were right. And I, I, have a, I have a memory of twice when you got very freaked out too. That we can talk. Uh, Me freaked you know, out. Well, you know, people pe people say when they watch this movie, "Gee, wasn't it scary doing it?" And I would always remember that the only person who ever saw the movie, as the audience would see it, was you. Yes, before video uh, video assist. Yeah. It's hard to even remember what it's like when you're the only guy seeing it. Now I remember somebody's <laughs> right. uh, Toby. Did you re? Write the script to add this house to to the f script. I think you know. I think so. Uh, well, no, there was always Grandpa's place. I, I, there was always Grandpa's place. But see, uh, directly across the street, behind us, I mean, looking at this yeah. house is is the Leatherface house. Right. Geographically, it's about uh, I don't know a couple hundred, three hundred yards behind the camera, if that. It's it's just over those trees, and. Um, Yeah, we, we, we made use as much as possible of uh, 
the location with as few moves as so we could base camp there once we got there. What a tiresome guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other thing I really liked in this movie uh-huh. was all this sort of mouth juice. You know, there's all this... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, oh yeah. and him with this, with raspberry. this yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he even does it with this, uh, uh, what I want to call it. Uh, is it a sausage? Just well, yeah, but it's it. also, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the limitations here are about the addiction. Oh, man, it's, it's, a, it's an R rated film. Yeah. Oh, so it really is somebody's dick. No. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> And then he starts spitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it may have been. <laughs> Just tell people that you intended it that way. It was no accident. <laughs> now, I was here for this, and I remember being way far away and hearing them giggling and laughing in the background, being so jealous that I couldn't be part of this group. Oh, really? So, so you did play Franklin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I... I I remember I got uh, the kind of laughter, and we shot the sound from down below, but it's really the kind of laughter that would piss anyone off, really, I think. Or, I mean, <laughs> they're having a good time, and he definitely is not downstairs. Yeah. What are they called? Those are daddy long legs. Yeah, there's thousands of them. Spiders, yeah. yeah. It must be really I, difficult to get the, the set dressed with all those spiders. Well, no, you, you know, I, I, we, we, we shot, you know, we, we shot around the spiders being there. We found the spiders, I think, on a, a location recce and, uh, and came back and they were still there. We came back again, they were still there, and so we worked it into the, uh, to the script or into the photo play. It's really interesting the way things happen. I mean, the house was raised, so there wasn't a, a level entrance to that spot, and we had to build up uh, scaffolding and some boards, and it made it all the harder for this guy in a wheelchair to get through. But it, it, it it's great. It works. Yeah, it made me feel good to see him struggle. Oh, but it did. Oh, <laughs> it did not. <laughs> We had nine lights, or one, or yeah. two, right? I don't know how many we had, but basically we were lighting with nine lights. It's really hard and yeah, sort of orange light. <laughs> <laughs> well, one one thing, you know, our, uh, uh, in, in grading the film, you know, and we went for a, a kind of a cheat uh, uh, to so it wouldn't look like a sixteen millimeter blow mm-hmm. up. The kind of color, so kind of uh, made it a little amber and. Um, but I think the release prints uh, in the first release, uh, as I recall, they, they were green. I mean, on the green side, and not on the amber. Re- release copy. prints were all over the place. I remember seeing some flip left for right. I remember seeing some where the timing tape was out of sync with the edits, and yeah, they were pretty much all over the place. The release prints. See, there's that mouth work again. Yeah. Oh, I see. The raspberry was important. I remember. <laughs> And here's his best line. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, there he goes. Didn't you say there's a swimming hole around here? Yeah. Well, Pam and I'd like to go swimming, man. Uh, there used to be a trail down between those two old sheds. Come on, we'll find it. Are Jerry and Sally going? No. Uh, we'll see you in an hour or so. Yeah. We'll see you in about an hour or so. Now, this we had... To, one of these we had to reshoot because the first week of shooting, I remember... 
uh, we had a 10 millimeter lens that was bad. Yes. And uh, and we had to come back and reshoot. And you grab something. a few of these shots again. Yeah. yeah. Well, you had actually planned on a much shorter shoot, uh, as I remember, because I remember my contract was for two weeks, and I shot for four. And I kept thinking, the way the contract is written, you don't have to pay me anything. And then you you paid me for the extra two weeks, but. Uh, so I, I had the impression that you'd planned to actually make the shoot much shorter than it was. Is that true? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I, I know this was a fluke the first week of shooting because of a bad lens, and uh, and uh, there was a sequence. Actually, it's it's coming up after this. There's a sequence that we shot that I just didn't like, and I mean, it just the sequence didn't didn't play, and it was uh, these two walk by. Uh, Walk into the woods. They find a shredded tent and uh, a watch with a nail through it, and it just didn't—it didn't look right, and uh, it didn't play play right. There's something wrong with the scene, and so um, you'll see how we fixed it by cutting that scene out. Look at that sun again. Yeah. Some really great, great photography in here, Daniel. Thank you. No, that's that's it. That's the. That, that's what the sequence that I was talking about got reduced to this, and then to tie them together from the focus pull from the watch to that. I believe they they commented on all of this, and it was just better to. Uh, get the ubiquitous point of view. Whose cars were these? Oh, I don't know. Do, do you know, Daniel? Uh, the it might have been, some of them might have been ours, probably, yeah. crew, crew cars. It must have been because half of them were folks <laughs> 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 Yeah. Must have been. We missed an opportunity here because of budget, uh, though, to show that a lot of these cars had been buried and uh, the, the radio antenna sticking up out of the ground. It was an excellent location you found, found for us with you know, the house and all this land around it. And really was. I think, did Bob Burns find this location? Or, or, or the, I'm not the, sure. The art director. What was the guy, the owner's name, the, the guy who was living there, his name was Rocky, wasn't it? Or something Rocky like or Smokey? Smokey, or, Smokey. Yeah. Yeah, Smokey. I remember yeah. Smokey telling me at the end of our second day, saying, come up to me and go, so you guys are finished now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I go, what? And bring on the elephants. And he goes, so you're done now, right? Because, uh, you know, they told me you're coming here for two days. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I went, Smokey, I think it's more like two weeks. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, we thought we could do it all faster. <laughs> Masterpiece of Burns is here. This uh, railroad tie, yeah. yard swing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I, I remember. I remember whenever I'd see Burns, he'd be ecstatic because he'd found a dead cow somewhere, and he was figuring out how to get it onto a truck. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he, he, yeah, yeah. Ro Ro Robert <laughs> kind of coveted that that armadillo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he did this. He put the filling in the teeth. Guy. <laughs> Someone, or did he, or or, or was it uh, Dorothy? Uh, uh, well, we, somebody uh, got a hell of a lot of teeth from some. We uh, we actually found a um, we found a veterinarian who had been throwing all the carcasses in a pile and get, told us where his pile of. Uh, of uh, you know, pet carcasses was, <laughs> and we went and rifled all the bones out of that pile. <laughs> yeah. And I remember we 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 were going to uh, uh, to try to use some of those carcasses, uh, and she was injecting these things with formaldehyde, <laughs> and she gave one a really good shot, and the 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 needle went through the the poor creature's leg, and and she shot herself with the formaldehyde in her leg. And, <laughs> This is the scene coming up where I'm on camera first, uh, for the first time, and uh, I was so nervous for this shot. 
when he falls down from being hit, I was supposed to drag him out of the shot. You damn just drag him. him yeah, I picked him up and threw him <laughs> into the wall. <laughs> No, I mean, don't you remember that? I mean, it was a rubber hammer. I mean, the yeah. replacement hammer. But, but I hit him really hard with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, but I threw him head first right into the wall inside the little red room. I guess I wonder he didn't get you know, impaled on those uh, yeah. little... There were little pillows there, and you were supposed to just drop. Yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah, I like this. People didn't quite understand this that uh, at the time. I mean, that it's possible for a piece of a uh, fragment of skull to to shoot into the brain after this and cause that kind of nervous uh, tick. And there's that spike of sound there that... <laughs> yeah, and here comes the, this. This is truly the best shot in the film, I think. This is just magnificent. I remember us, um, at this point, we were trying to, to adhere very closely to a, uh, a, a storyboard and shot list in order to maintain... Uh, a schedule. Our production wanted us to to uh, stay rigid to a time schedule, and uh, we had just I think we had finished shooting the sequence, and Toby and I came up with the idea for this shot that we could make this shot that would f go under the swing and approach the house on a very wide-angle lens, and the house would grow and grow and grow as you go towards it. Uh, we achieved it by uh, me laying on a, on, a, on this flatbed dolly and holding the camera off the front tilting the camera up enough so you can't see the track. We're using all 40 feet of our track that we have. But we ran into um, uh, quite a bit of resistance from production about us shooting the shot. No, you, sh you know, they told us, no, you've shot all the shots you had on the storyboard here, and you've got to move on to another yeah. scene. But you know, this is the kind of thing that comes up in the course of, of making a film. We, we come up with an idea, and uh, if my, my memory is correct, Toby, I think we had to pretty much... Uh, uh, you know, really have, uh, have a Mexican standoff over shooting that yeah, shot. Yeah, I think so. I remember we did, yeah. Uh, the shot was perfect, too, because it shows their bare back, you know, that makes it, it makes you even more uptight when she's hanging on the hook. And it really made Bob Burns uptight because he had to come up with a harness for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was real upset but I, th about I that. think you discovered that shot, Daniel. I think we shot the coverage first, and then you said, hey, come look at this. And then, yeah, we did, ha we did have to say, no, we have to have this shot. Yeah, we, uh, we uh, you know, they threatened to fire us. We threatened to quit. Oh, we yeah. said, we, we have to make this shot. You can fire us when we're done with this, but uh, this yeah. is a shot that's got to be made. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it has emerged as one of the most memorable shots in the picture. Yeah, definitely. This is an interesting sequence, too, here. Remember Burns with all his chickens? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chicken in a bird cage, yeah. Chickens in a cage. I don't know if Bob liked that, that chicken yeah, in a bird cage. He was not very happy about the chickens <laughs> in a bird cage. It was so sweltering hot, the chickens were about a, asleep. <laughs> and we're needing some uh, some animation out of the chickens. We don't, didn't want them to look like stuffed chickens. <laughs> well, as, we tried well as you'll see later, uh, Toby told me to hit the chicken <laughs> when I ran by it to, to live it up. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the chicken, well, yeah. It was. <laughs> There's so this, our boxes of bones that are yeah. comprised of some uh, rental bones, some uh, some yeah. the, from the veterinarian's pile of bones. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. we bought we, we actually bought, ones, yeah. bought one skeleton. That's right. Yeah, Burns told me that it was cheaper to buy a skeleton from India. Yeah, than, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and it was to buy a plastic one. Yeah. That's it right. is. We had, yeah, that's right. We could get a real Indian skeleton. Yeah, yeah. perfect, yeah. perfect skeleton. It's like you know, skeleton farms. I mean, perfect teeth, grown skeleton. The, um, the the shot coming up um, is a good example of the combination of putting me in three-inch heels, putting a mask on me that I had absolutely no peripheral vision. I could barely see out of it. And then there's a ramp. See the ramp into the little room, uh, which meant that I was actually taller than the door frame. And in the first run-through of this, I cleared the door because I was bent down. But, but when we actually filmed it the first time, I was I had to lean back so I was full upright couldn't see and you see how I bend over there because the first take of it I cracked my head and fell out cold a, a, a great sound effect too oh when I hit my head <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you ran out with with Pam uh, uh, Ted, Ted Nicolau's uh, wife was driving up I think with uh, their daughter and I think you I said you know God knows what damage you did. <laughs> oh, God. we should tell everybody that, by the way, that this is all live. I mean, the saw was so reliable. It was, we had one, only one saw, right. and it always started. 
We never had any problem. I think we had problem. Well, we started having problems because we started taking the clutch out, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so no one would get uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. hurt. This shot, the the saw is live, and I told Bill, uh, "Don't move, and I promise you, I won't hit you. But if you flinch, you're dead." And uh, the saw is live, and the saw blade, the chain is about three inches from his head. And uh, the, the chips were hitting him in the face as we were right. shooting that. Yeah, now, I remember yeah. you, Daniel, s stepping away from the camera going, oh, my God. I remember being particularly... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a particularly strong sequence to shoot, the one you just saw. Uh, very, uh, you know... Very, very strong uh, stuff coming down the lens into my eye at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And, and, and also in the in the uh, uh, and and the big screenings that I went to when the film first came out. If anyone was going to walk, that's that's where they walked. That's where they walked. Wasn't yeah. it? Well, it's so effective because it happens yeah. so fast. There's no build up. There's no nobody. There's nothing as telescope. You have no idea it's going to happen until bang, she's on the hook. Gunner, your strength really, uh, you know, as I'm, as I'm watching it again, I can see it subtly and things like when Pam goes running out the door, you grab her and her feet are like still skittering on, on you know, you've got one arm around her, she's trying to run and get away and her feet are just slipping and, and I remember you, you that, that, the chainsaw is like a toothbrush in your hand, I mean you could do anything with yeah. it, you know, the rest of us have to pick it up and sort of be very careful and two-handed, you could just take it in one hand and wave it around like it weighed nothing, really, uh, really works a lot, works well in there. Great. But it's funny how I tried to, you know, it was a real problem for me because I had to come up with a character who didn't talk. And Toby said, well, you have to be able to squeal like a pig. Mm -hmm. So I went out to a friend's place out in the country, and he had some pigs, and I'd stand out there for hours, and I had a stick. And I was poking the pigs, <laughs> trying to get them to squeal. And when they'd squeal, I'd be out there squealing. And I couldn't get him to do anything, or I couldn't get myself to make the right sound. So finally, I went out to uh, the Austin State School, which is a residential campus for retarded persons. I spent two days out there walking around, figuring... I had to be able to represent this character physically, so I just walked around for two days until I had movements that you couldn't distinguish me from somebody who was a, a patient or a student, I guess they called it, but uh, as some way to represent the character, uh, since you I wouldn't did. let me talk. Yeah, I didn't know you did that. Well, you, you do talk in one, one, well, one spot. Yeah, but you took it out. Remember, we changed that. Uh, no, no, it's, it's when Jim Cito comes in and he, he oh, says, right. oh, look what your brother's done to the Different. door, you know, he's yeah. got no pride in his home. And he uh, chases in after <laughs> yeah. you, and then you go something like... But, you know, I was looking at my notes. You know, what we did was there were gibberish lines in the script, and we sat down, and you told me what the lines meant. So I wrote parenthetically what I was trying to say. And we shot it once, and you said, that doesn't work at all. There's too much intelligence in the character. Pretend that he's trying to talk but hasn't, doesn't have a clue about how to really talk. So that's... I remember reshooting that with him just going... And Matt motioning because he didn't know how to make, you know, hadn't a clue how to speak. Right. <laughs> so my one chance to have a line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look what your brother's done to the damn door. One of my most often quoted lines. Yeah. Yeah. Not any of your little coon shit. I told you, and I told you to stay away from that graveyard. And he's quack quack. <laughs> I remember when Toby first contacted me, I was, as I mentioned before, I was 23 years old. I just finished getting my master's degree at, at the University of Texas in the cinema department. And I figured I'm a pretty good cinematographer. I'm going to be shooting films by the time I'm 35. And Toby called me up and offered me this film and said, we're going to send you a screenplay, you know, being a common courtesy that one would do to a cinematographer, one would give to a cinematographer. Well, I mean, I was so excited to be getting a movie, I would have shot it no matter what it was. But I... I read the screenplay, and the screenplay was so incredibly strong. I mean, it's, it's this kind of writing, this dialogue that, that Toby's talking about, and, and this, it, the film is right there on paper, man. It just sent it chills up and down my spine. I could not believe it. I was just, I was in heaven. I remember you called me, and you said you locked the door or something. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out the window. I couldn't believe it. I remember really clearly getting, trying out for the part. I went down, I called Bob Burns, who was doubling as the casting director, and I, he was very vague about the movie, never told me much of anything, and said, we, you know, we'll call you. And he did, about three days later, and asked me to come down and meet you and Danny. And I, I remember sitting down with you two, and you were very intentioned. You described the film in real great detail, and the character, who the character was, what Leatherface was about. And then my tryout consisted of you said to me, are you violent? And I said, no. And you said... Well, are you crazy? 
And I said, no. And you got this real worried look on your face. So he said, can you do it? And I said, oh, sure, that's easy. And he said, okay, you got the part. <laughs> and then a, a couple of weeks later when we were having, having this, the contract signing party where everybody was signing off, and as soon as I signed the contract and you pulled it to your chest, you said, you know, the minute you walked in and filled the door, <laughs> exactly. I knew I wanted you. <laughs> I told you that. That's good. So I don't yeah. have to tell you. Yeah. 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 You had the part for the, before you came through the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I kept thinking, well, so much for talent. Uh, <laughs> Come on now. Right Come place on. at the right time. Yeah. Now, this is a great example of not wanting to know me at all until the, the scene is shot. Um, right. And this... this We'd never been face to face with uh, with me in the mask, right? And there's somebody on the floor with his hand on his belt to yank him to the floor, as I remember. But the first take on this, when Leatherface comes in the door, he lets out this scream of terror, and there's this look in his face that's really genuine. <laughs> and he dove for the door. He he just took off he and, and ran. Well, he knew you just knocked Bill Bell's head off. <laughs> so, <laughs> but this right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first time he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> this is the great thing about Leatherface, though, is this, this revealing moment, the, the, this, this yeah, close-up. Right. You like, mean the thinking of you, you moment? Know, where are they coming from? Yeah. Where are all these people coming from? And I kept trying to remember, now, when you come down the hallway here, hit the, the chicken cage. Yeah, right. So, you know, watch. Yeah, you... Right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> And I love this this worried look yeah. that, that Leatherface And has. the teeth my dentist made for me. I thought they were great. Oh, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. He ad-libbed those, you know, made them with little tiny points instead it, of big fangs. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like they were baby teeth. Uh, oh my God, are more coming? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Am I going to pass the uh, graduate exam? <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> Just really worried about this. Yeah. What's and then this sort of dead moment. Yeah. Well, look at those dead eyes. I guess it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dinner. <laughs> moon. I remember you sending me out about a week before we started to shoot the picture to get the shot of the moon. I didn't imagine I could possibly. The moon was bright enough to photograph. I went out and overexposed it the first time. Yeah. You know, there's a white hole. I had to go back again. <laughs> Yeah, that's t that's you know where we discover you know it's it's daytime. You shot night for day? No, no. <laughs> I suppose it is, I figured well it can't be very bright. I'll just shoot it all the way open. You know, just came back a white hole. Yeah. Now I remember that Marilyn uh, and Franklin did not like each other very much, and that a lot of this bickering was genuine. Is that right? I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm always uncomfortable watching this this little sequence. Yes, yeah, this because this, it's this. so tense. Mm -hmm. You know, they're so uncomfortable. Uh, editorially, there's an interesting thing that that happens in this sequence. Uh, when when you come out, when when you get Franklin, uh, and and there's a shot of the flashlight uh, that uh, comes up, then cut to to reveal you. So since it isn't in the same shot. Uh, it was a cut, in other words, from him to you, uh, m making it uh, shocking, uh, maximum shocking, uh, chair jumper style. Uh, what what I did was I refined it down and cut and cutting it, and then I found out it works best if, on the flashlight shot, if I remove four frames, so that he never quite gets there because the audience tends. To go along like with music that you understand and and can anticipate so that uh, that fraction of a second difference uh, made a difference I remember us having a conversation as well about um, magicians uh, technique of misdirection and use of misdirection to direct the eye to one side of the frame and have the danger uh, enter frame from the other side so that by the time you realize there was danger it was in the middle of the frame and it that I think uh, helps makes this a bit, bit more shocking as well. Yeah. Uh, also, the the cutting, uh, cutting it in general, I would generally cut not right on action like or, uh, most editors do, 
Uh, but I would generally cut a beat before the action or a beat just after it. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't that, that continuum. And so you'd get these little chops, subliminal things that well, I was noticed meant to make you uncomfortable. I noticed in the graveyard scene with a fellow who says, I see, th- I seen things, and he's lying in the tire. Right at the end, he's coughing, and then he goes, <gasps> and he starts to take the breath, and you cut the scene before he finishes taking his breath. And it's, there's th- that moment makes it really tense when mm-hmm. you're waiting for it to finish. Yeah. There's al- also, when you get hit in the head with the wrench, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I, I, is when I remembered. I mean, I noticed that, 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 that there's a wide shot of you, and then it punches in close, and then the wrench hits mm-hmm. instead of, you know, punching in as the wrench hits. And it's, uh, it's close enough to be conventional, but it's, 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 it adds a little edge. I thought you were really clever on this, Toby. We, we, what Toby had me do here was light this one 40-foot stretch of dolly track that we had, and then we shot it on many different sizes repeatedly through the night. All this traveling, all of this uh, the scene that's about to unfold in front of you all takes place on one stretch of dolly track that we were able to, to shoot off the left side, sometimes off the right side, and just uh, make the most out of our one good setup. Oh, well, all of the, the, the woods, I mean, remember, it was probably... Uh, uh, it was only about 70 feet by yeah, if even that 35. Long. Yeah, even, yeah, it was very tiny, and you, you'd uh, have the scaffolding up. I think we had a... What did you have, two towers or one, or could we yeah, afford I think, two? I think, I, I, I think we had two towers. I had a 10K <laughs> on one and two 5Ks on the other. <laughs> <laughs> with yes. blue gel for the nighttime convention, making it very... Between a combination of gelling the light with the blue and the slow stock, it was nothing <laughs> next to nothing out there. Yeah, here's it. Hey, Jay! Jay! Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! And uh, we started the saw live on that shot, too. Yeah. See here, look, these yeah, blood being sprayed yeah, up. It, he's sort of being flicked up with your fingertips, <laughs> and then finally he just threw the whole cup at me. <laughs> yes, that's right. It was just off to the side. Yeah. I forgot. I remember very clearly you and Dorothy were flanking the lens on either side, <laughs> yeah. flicking yeah. and throwing yeah. blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now this chase stuff. Oh yeah. I got to talk about this. <laughs> Marilyn was extremely slow running, and I always thought that that must be why almost never are we in the same frame. Uh, and there are a couple of times where we're together where you'll notice that Leatherface just stops and starts doing stuff because I didn't want to overrun her. <laughs> okay. Like here, see? In the background, I'm yeah. cutting limbs there for a second. And it was just so I didn't catch her before she got away. Right, right. I, I remember Daniel nearly lost an eye. Oh, yeah, Somewhere right. Yeah. You, we, the, the camera hit a tree or something. My, yeah, what it was is this... Uh, this on our 40 feet track that we had we had a, our grip uh, was a very long legged guy who got up to speed fast and he would start me from a dead stop and get me up to a running <laughs> speed as fast as he could and uh, I was panning with the subject and my elbow went came outside of the sort of the narrow corridor of the track and my my right elbow which was paying the camera hit a tree going backwards and it s- slammed the camera back into my eye um, bad black eye yeah I got a bad black eye from it <laughs> Uh, time to do some pruning. Um, also in this chase, um, I forgot I wasn't wearing cleats. And I don't know if you remember that. I was running down, chasing her, and I had to make a sharp turn. And uh, as I turned, my feet went out from under me, and I fell up, fell, landed on my back, and the saw went up past the lights. I remember and that. And I could, couldn't see well enough out of the mask to have any idea where the saw was. And I looked around, and rolled over onto my side and covered up my head and the saw landed beside me. God almighty, I remember chaos. Yeah, awesome. and that's why in this little bit here, this is after it's happened, why, look at the way I turn here. And the reason I turn this way, and it looks like a sort of goofy take on a key, Keystone Cop. Oh, it's great. It's, I was trying to keep from falling. So it's, it's like a big motor scooter or something, <laughs> you know, sliding in. So it has this sort of comic effect, but in fact, yeah. I just didn't want to fall down. 
I was in Washington, so I'd like to have a lot of these lighting setups back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have another chance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, now we well. see a little. <laughs> Listen, all kind of <laughs> things can be done now. You know? That's right. <laughs> you know this thing about how an actor is supposed to always find his light? You'll notice here when I cut the door, and then I cut, I realized that I could see you, Danny, on the floor. And so I moved over to make sure that you could see my face really well as I was cutting the door open. <laughs> and I think that... Uh, Good stuff. Was that the sequence where j that was just basically the three of us were the only guys working as we were doing this door yeah. cutting sequence, wasn't it? Yeah. And then you jumped up. I remember you jumped up when I kicked the door, and you jumped up and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> we had been uh, been working long, and our whole crew had sort of fallen out on us, just out of exhaustion and sleeping all over the house. And the three of us was near that. The door cutting was near the end of the sequence, and. Uh, yeah, we had to get it done. We didn't have a choice. So just the three of us making the film at that moment. Yeah, that was the time when, yeah. waiting to set that shot up, I was sitting on the um, on the porch saying, "Time has no meaning," <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just right. chanting that for for I, it felt like several hours. <laughs> now, poor Marilyn here. You know, you had a stunt double go out the window and fall two feet into a mattress, and then you dropped her off the roof so that the landing looked authentic. Poor Marilyn, she was so beat up. She was. She she yeah. she really put a lot into it. Yeah, and she was totally into it. There's one take coming up when she when she gets to the gas uh, station, the, uh, the barbecue book, barbecue. See, stand. So look at that turn. Look at that turn. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, when she breaks through the door in that uh, uh, scene with Jim Cito, she, we shot that I think 17 times, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did you think she was Marilyn Monroe? Is that uh, no, 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 no. I mean, she, but she really uh, screwed her knees up. I think. There's a little piece that's missing from the film um, coming up when, um, and this is the origin of the dance at the end. When she comes into the to the parking lot of the barbecue, and makes the turn. You told me to come to that corner and stop, and start just get crazy. And so I started dancing around, twirling with the saw. Right. And then uh, that became, at the end of the film, you said, let's do that again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, cut, I cut it out because well, it, it, it was, you know, it was best to not know if you were outside that door or not. I mean, that's, that's yeah. why Jim Cito, when he goes out to the truck, he leaves the, uh, the door open and you have yeah. Marilyn and then yeah. the door and you... And also, I always felt like you're coming through. You don't want to like give it away, but that's. I mean, it makes the ending stronger not yeah, to oh, see yeah. the dancing before. See here, I. She was so slow. <laughs> I'm like just sort of funny. galumphing behind her. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, I, I love these long lens shots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here is where. Well, the great yeah. thing is too. Then, when the truck starts up for a second, you think it's the saw. Yeah, that's I. I, I <laughs> well, I thought it was the same. Yeah. <laughs> He's so great in this. Yeah, that's thing. the that's the one we shot 17 times, and uh, I mean that's like real blood on her, her knees, and it's really the costume is torn because that's that's the way she hit the concrete. There were no pads. I'm not sure we had that technology back then, but <laughs> it was uh, just... Uh, Would it cost more? Yeah. Where was this, this, uh, towards where the highway this gas station was on? Does, does anybody remember? It was out toward uh, Bastrop, wasn't it? I think, it, yeah. That, that it was east, east of town. Yeah, that, yeah, sounds, that, right. that, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the shot with the door open. It's I remember this. She came in, the first time she came in, she was so wound up and, and freaked out. She went on for an entire roll of film the first yeah. time, an entire... Yeah, eleven minute roll of film. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, she knew that if she just kept going, that you'd leave her alone for a while. 
Yeah, she was really into the uh, into that moment. That, that's why I don't know if we shot if we shot this before we shot the chase. I don't I don't recall. I know we we did camp at this location. We either shot the entire day and then through the night to get this, or we were there two days. I'm not I don't know. And this is where I think you really see him change, just a twitch in his face, and mm -hmm. he goes from really benign to... Yeah, he's really great, this yeah. skitzing yeah. around he does, yeah. And, and he's gentle with it, too, you know. It's like like toward the end, you know, when he says, oh, my grandpa's the best killer that ever was. <laughs> <laughs> Won't hurt a bit now. <laughs> That's right. He could have killed more if the hook and pull game had gone. <laughs> got the bees out of the way sooner, <laughs> <laughs> faster. <laughs> there are just some things a man's got to do, but you don't have to like it. I think that's his other one. Right. This brooming. This is excellent. God, oh, poor Marilyn. I know. God, Marilyn got some. <laughs> Got some dings and bings. I think we lost Marilyn for a day or two after this scene, didn't we? She was, <laughs> well, she was pretty well beat up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much from the brooming as much as the running in and falling down. She just had gotten exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's the band playing in the background? I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how she, <laughs> how she consented to that. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, as, as I, <laughs> because the, the, the rag had been everywhere. I mean, we were walking on that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of, uh, as they say, subtext. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the scene coming out is is uh, really an interesting side of this character that Jim, Jim Cito is playing. Especially this little goofy moment here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. This little little. Uh, <clears throat> moment about capitalism and uh, yeah. this kind of, I mean this this film kind of came out of the uh, Watergate uh, uh, times it was kind of inspired by it in, in, in a lot of way uh, that and there was a song called dead dog in the middle of the road right. stinking to high heaven yeah. yeah yeah and it you know it said nothing but then again I guess it said everything She really cares about your problems, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so you mean this film is really not about the breakdown of the American family? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's a, that family sticks together, <laughs> man. That's, that's a, the family that slays <laughs> together, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's this, he'll kind yeah, of get, watch him, he'll yeah. get a little bit embarrassed, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> See how his wife has stayed with him so long. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shot coming up, Daniel. The one where he, when he sees uh, the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker, yeah. Well, it's interesting that that. Uh, what do you? You had a couple of uh, little quartz uh, lights on. Someone was running cable. Mm -hmm. Because the headlights were illuminating. All right, we had rigged uh, two uh, 1Ks in, on the bumper in the place of the headlights. 
to try and uh, actually worked out very well for us. We got uh, this point of view and um, the shot that's going to be looking from the house back out of the car. Yeah. Out of the setup. It worked really nicely. It was, uh, what? Oh, right, yeah, the, the, the I told you and told you, uh, stay away from that graveyard. Nap here, idiot. Nap here, idiot. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. It's really nice. <laughs> See, we really weren't just a bunch of college students. I don't know. It's an interesting summer. <laughs> <laughs> what was that 25 ASA? This was really amazing. That was. The sun was coming up, right? Mm -hmm. This is great. Yeah. And then he goes the other side. Now, I actually asked the, the door you had up there for that for cutting out, of course, was a, an extra do a door you added. But I actually cut into the door frame, I remember, and damaged the <laughs> door frame. <laughs> I kept thinking the owner's not going to like this. Now, here is Leatherface in his new getup yeah. as the grandma. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people don't know that Leatherface actually has three different masks he wears in the movie. And uh, y y you told me that the whole idea is that the mask is because he really has nothing inside. I mean, it's, the mask is the personality. So he changes faces depending on what he's trying to do. Now he's being domestic, he's been making dinner, and so he's got the old lady mask on, uh, I got an apron and a giant wooden spoon. And yeah. he moves differently too. I, I thought you was in a hurry. <laughs> the armchair. Yeah, the armchair. <laughs> <laughs> My voice changed after this. <laughs> Yippee. You damn fool! You ruined the door! That's the first time you hear Leatherface. You, yeah. you, you hear your name. And I think there's only one other reference when... Yep, at the dinner scene, me and Leatherface do all the work. Yeah. You're just the cook. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Now, uh, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> go, yes, go ahead. Go. Uh, he was a guy who really understood that not only putting a mask on does it free you, but when the mask takes eight or ten hours to put on <laughs> yeah. and you do something unpleasant, no one can touch you. Uh, and so when we were doing... <laughs> Uh, when we carry him down the stairs here in a minute, uh, he would go limp in the chair. Do you, you remember this? Yeah. He'd go limp in the chair and then slide out between my feet. And he'd do it over and over and over again. What was his name again, the guy that played in there, remember? He, he yeah, was John Dugan. John yeah, Dugan. John Dugan, yeah. John was uh, 18 years old and uh, That's right. he was cast somehow to play the 108-year-old granddad. He looked 15. Yeah. yeah, he was thin, you know. He was yeah, he was thin, and it was, uh, as Gunnar had mentioned, uh, about a 10-hour makeup job, at, at which time, at the end of the, applying the, all the prosthetics makeup to make him a 108-year-old man, he announced he was not sitting through it again, and we had to shoot him out. So <laughs> this sequence that you're starting to see here now, of course, we were 10 hours into our day when we got this announcement, and um, we had to shoot him out. I remember very clearly... We worked 27 hours straight in order That's to... Right. So we started noon on Saturday and finished, what, 3 in the afternoon on Sunday? I don't know, but yeah. it was 27 hours Sunday. straight in order to shoot him out of the movie entirely. And, and 
my other recollection of this is dinner sequence was absolutely the hottest oh, we, we mentioned it was hot but this is where it really peaked for us it was uh we were shooting it during the daylight hours with with it blacked in and it was just outrageously hot <laughs> and the slow yeah. film stock requiring a lot of light we had all this uh head cheese yeah, yeah. Uh, that was heating up. Yeah. Heating up. It was probably <laughs> yeah, right. probably rancid yeah. before we got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was like d- Dramamine or something like that. Well, that, I remember uh, nausea every once in a while they'd odor was they'd say take a oh, take a break. Right. Everybody would go outside and the, and Dr. Barnes was giving everybody some sort of nausea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I thought, that I we were sticking our heads out the window, throwing up, or maybe it was just <laughs> me. I don't know. Well, and the trouble was, of course, it did me no good because I remember the rule was you can't take Gunner's mask off. Unless it's a 15-minute break or longer, <laughs> and every br- every break was a five-minute break, even if it lasted an hour, and so we'd, you'd say, "All right, everybody, outside five minutes for air," and I get to stand outside and breathe the bad air in my mask. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the night when I finally got so ripe that no one they wouldn't let me stand in line <laughs> to get dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Tell a story, Gunner, about this. Uh... Oh yes, Th- this scene. There's a there's a tube there's a bulb in my palm on the on, with a knife and a, and a and there's a, a there's a tube to feed the blood there the fake blood we shot this over and over again because the tube kept clogging uh and fi- and there's a piece of tape scotch tape over the blade edge to keep it dull and it the, we couldn't get the blood out of the tube onto the knife edge and so after the fourth or fifth take while they're all sort of getting ready to shoot it i turned away from everybody and stripped the tape off the knife and, and the tube, the blood tube, and then actually just cut her. And, uh, and the reason was, at this point, we were insane, and now we're, we're, now we're 18 hours into this 27-hour day. And, and she's ruined anyway. I mean, she's yeah, so buggered Yeah, up. she's no good. And I was so crazy. I mean, at this point, I was so crazy that I just wanted to get the film over with. And I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about hurting her. I just wanted to not do this again. And it's interesting because later I'll mention the the rest of what happens uh, yeah, because yeah. of that kind of craziness. But, but for the record, I didn't tell you to take that. No, 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 no. I no, no. This is the no. first I hear about this. Yeah. This is the first <laughs> I'm hearing about it. I wouldn't have carried on on this movie. I didn't know it was actual uh, real well, bloodshed. Well, I knew that you were very sensitive, Daniel, so I didn't want to tell you about it. But you know, there's things a man's just got to do. <laughs> All right, well, it could have been a 30-hour day if you hadn't done that, I guess. So thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I would expect Marilyn to say things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't saying thanks then. And the great thing was, she really got upset and was crying because I'd cut her, but nobody noticed because everybody was so <laughs> whacked out. You know? Oh, it's just Marilyn complaining. <laughs> and, I, and I hear this uh, Jim Cito going through all these different these, these I always thought of the sausages problems. as being, uh, uh, being uh, Jerry because it's the same color as his hair. <laughs> <laughs> You see, now Leatherface has a different face. Uh, Come to dinner. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. putting the, the makeup on, I remember everyone freaking out when I dipped into the makeup and smeared it all over. And then, <laughs> and, <this>. and there's <laughs> a little piece in here that, that, didn't, that didn't make it into the final film, which is, you remember, I actually get up and walk out of the room and put more makeup on. There's a, you have a little right. shaving stand right here and... and so I think if you look really closely, the face, the makeup on the face changes from the beginning of the scene to the end. Although yeah, right. Because extreme. during that, you 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 made yourself up again. I yeah. Think. I think I was thinking, I like you. <laughs> pretty. This scene we shot over and over and over. Yeah, I remember this one. You kept telling us that all the cut cutaways had to be perfect. So. It seemed like we shot it 20 times or 25 times. Yeah, I think, as usual, I think go through the entire... You went through uh, the whole scene. The whole scene, yeah. It was just so... The, 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 this is where we were... Ten- were we tented in here? Or was yes, this we're tented in yeah. at this point. It's it really was, hot. It was just a nightmare. Yeah. I remember that uh, you would... Occasionally switch out the head cheese for so-called fresh head cheese, which, which had been sitting in the other room at 100 degrees <laughs> versus right. 125. So right. all the head Except for the chicken, which you couldn't switch out. It was the, the chicken art there in yeah. the foreground. Now that chicken, that is not the same chicken as the one that uh, was in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> but that prop did arrive late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right after we hit that. I mean, actually, yeah. I just thought of that. Yeah. That's chilling. 
That's so great when he does it. Oh uh, yeah, what's Grandpa thinking? Oh, yeah. The Mexican flag shot. He just, he just can't help himself. He, the energy kind of pulls him back in and into the spirit of it, you know. <laughs> and this is when we really are like this. I mean, I think this is the one scene there is really no acting going on, uh, where we're all crazy. Just now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because I get asked, how can you do a film like this? How could you be this monster? And I say, well, uh, you're not the character you're playing, you know. I'm, you, you, you're separate and you, you do it and you present the physical presence of the character, but you're not the character. But in this scene, coming up a little bit, I think I certainly lost any sense that I was play acting. Um, maybe play acting isn't the right word. And I just comp lost any sense of that and I really thought I was trying to kill it. <laughs> I did, and, and uh, I jumped up at one point when, when the, uh, the hitchhiker yells, kill the bitch, and I thought, kill the bitch, yes, kill her, and I jam jumped at her because that's what I thought I was supposed to do, and then they had this flash of, wait a minute, this is a movie. It was like, a, uh, this was, was all in that 27-hour yeah, <laughs> thing, yeah. and it was just, yeah. yeah, we were living it. And while you guys are up discussing the lights for a shot, I remember Dottie saying, this is purgatory. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Well, in in the background, outside behind this house, what's going on? Uh, we we uh, talked about it earlier. Uh, I think Daniel mentioned it about the uh, the the veterinarian and the uh, uh, you know all the dead animals and uh, and uh, Dorothy getting you know shot in the leg with the uh, uh, formaldehyde. But anyway, so I said you know we have to get rid of these. We just have to get rid of them and. Uh, so someone stacked them like logs <laughs> and behind this house poured gasoline over and set fire to and walked away like uh, they were going to vanish you know it's and then when we wrapped i walked out back to to this vision of these giant marshmallows roasted that were just it was just terrible and and uh, the smoke was blowing into the set during that time. Yeah, it was basically the gasoline only like burned the fur off of them. Yeah, right. right. It was really yeah. horrible. It was really <laughs> horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did that on purpose. <laughs> no. no <I> <laughs> Anything for art. What? <laughs> what did they have in their minds? <laughs> this is where we really have lost control. I mean, yeah. I had no perspective. I had no idea that I had a life other than this. And I didn't. You know, my, my housemate's girlfriend had moved in and was living with us for a month, and I didn't know it during the filming of this movie. Is that right? Yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, and, and the design of this that, uh, at this point, I mean, you can't expect how is she going to get away now. You know, she can't get out of this. So I think it's the first. I think it's the first film that a heroine jumped through a window, a, a plate glass window, twice. He's <laughs> 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 skitzing off. I'm only gonna, I'm gonna take. Oh, there's the shot. Yeah. Looks like she's got Ed pretty good. Okay, now here comes the, the of course, the, the this sequence. Remember, Daniel, we had to wait for the for the sun to travel eight or nine hundred miles to come get uh, clouds. I mean, <laughs> to get in front of the sun, so all of this could be graded as uh, early morning. Mm -hmm. And this is where, if you remember, you had the track laid diagonally across the, the road, and you'd close the road off, and the sheriff and came the sheriff through, the, came through the flaggers, yeah. pulled up within two feet of the, the track, the yeah. track and, and, and uh, I think the production manager came up and said, we have permission to close the road, 
and uh, he said, from who? Yeah. And uh, you said the, the state police, and he said, this is my county. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that was Jim Boutwell, the famous for during the during the Charlie Whitman Tower incident <laughs> of grabbing an airplane, flying around the tower solo, and shooting his pistol at Whitman <laughs> in the tower. <laughs> Now, yeah, you should the, tell how you taught Chuck. Yeah, that was backward. The the truck was in reverse. We took the, uh, just using the, the cab and... Uh, yeah, we had dark. run the, uh, because of 16 millimeter, we were able to turn the camera upside oh, down right. and shoot it backwards going away and then yeah, flip, right. W then flipped the film in the edit and comes back right side up and backwards. Yeah. Love the name of this Black Maria. Yeah. What? Wasn't that, wasn't that Edison, Edison's stu film studio? Black Mariah. Right. Yeah. Now, by the way, all during the filming, I'm saying to Toby, how are we going to shoot this scene where I get hit in the leg? And Toby would say, oh. I don't know, but don't worry about it. It's the last shot in the movie. That's and I'd think, oh, that's good. And then I'd realize what he meant was, if you're killed, we've got the movie in the can. <laughs> but as I recall, that, that when the saw goes in and it does that, you had a metal, a metal plate on your leg, but yeah. the heat yeah. and so I, you a... So I actually thought I'd been hit. I actually thought it cut through Is me. That right? yeah. yeah. I remember that. It was a metal plate with a nice beef brisket on top yeah, of it. Right. That's right. Place. Yeah. 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 And here, in this little piece, Marilyn was so slow and dramatic climbing into the back of the pickup that we had to do it over and over and over again because I kept catching her. Mm -hmm. And finally, on this one, she got in in time, and then the guy didn't drive away. And so you. I started to climb in the truck. I didn't know what else to do. Yeah, it's, that's good. It looked, it looked almost looked like it clipped her. Now, this was my favorite thing in the movie, because it, because I yeah. when we were swinging the saw, and I could barely see, at one point I looked out and saw through the little tiny eye hole, Danny, running away, this, this <laughs> <laughs> because he was trying to avoid being hit, and behind him was Toby with a cigar in his mouth, and one of the producers. <laughs> And they were scurrying away to keep from being hit by the saw. So I started swinging the saw at you. That, that last <laughs> right. shot was you know, a moment out of a much longer take, but it was quite a choreography dance of the two of us, uh, me with the camera and Gunnar with the saw <laughs> swing. And that was uh, just one of those magical moments, uh, you know, filmmaking, where just everything just starts working. The light was working for us. His action, I was fortunately moving in the right direction to avoid the saw. And that has worked out really nicely. And that was, by the way, sunset. Sun, sun up, wasn't it? Well, it's, it's sun, no, 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 sunset no, up was, in the story, yeah, but wasn't it was sunset, sunset actually? Yeah. Yeah. Must have been sunset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we did it now, it would be sunrise. <laughs> yeah, right. It <laughs> <laughs> must have taken us all day. Well, I remember that at that point we had had, uh, that was the first day that McClary was, uh, was working as a camera assistant that day. Um, uh, Lou had, had uh, quit, oh. I guess. He said I'd been oh. rude to him, and Lou had... Uh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a few quittings and things go on, yeah. a few personnel changes. <laughs> so much I don't hear it till later. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> right. no, it's true, well, too. You know, just Kids are always that way with their parents. Whole, whole, I remember because we had made McClary the assistant, and I remember getting ready to shoot the shot and tipping the camera. I was talking, and I had my one hand out, and I tipped the camera down, and the lens fell off and landed right in my hand. <laughs> and, oh, my God, this new assistant, oh, man, the lens is falling out of the camera. Oh, no, what's this going to be like? 